This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, students. I'm Dr. Divya from T9 Steen. So Good evening. To... Good evening. So today we are moving to next unit, unit A. So in this unit, we are going to learn how biology is related with human welfare. So in this whole unit, we are going to learn how biology is related with this human welfare in different aspects. We are going to learn the different aspects of this. So in this, in this unit, three chapters are there. Which are the three chapters? Chapter number eight, human health and diseases. Then ninth chapter, strategies for enhancement in food production. Then microbes in human welfare. Like that, three chapters are included in this unit. So, So now we are going to chapter 8, Human Health and Diseases. So you know that in 20th and 21st century, there are much improvement in the utility of this biological knowledge. Uh, related to biology, so many improvements are coming. Just now you know how that corona vaccine they have developed. So that is a plus for biology, right? So we, we are learning about all the physics, chemistry, everything and the applications of the daily using electricity, then whatever food, everything, whatever we are using, that general chemistry and physics, we can relate with so many things. So the application of biology that was limited. So in 20th and 21st century, they developed biological applications in different way. Okay. So we are going to learn those things, how biology is related. So 20th and 21st century shows much development or much improvement in the utility of biological knowledge and biological applications in human welfare. So uh, you know that this is applied in health sector and agriculture in both divisions. Application of biology, you can see in different ways they are using this biological applications. So drug di discovery, then development of vaccinations, all uh, drugs which are deriving from plants, then the antibiotics, all these are coming under health sector. Okay. And in agriculture sector, what tunnel we can see, food processing we can see, and a lot of changes and improvement in the practices, agriculture practices. How Uh, one agricultural work or uh, the methods of agriculture. In that itself, we can see a lot of improvement and short duration crop, development of short duration crop and uh, which is resistant or water, water use efficiency. How, see nowadays water, it is reducing day by day, right? The water level because climate, there is a drastic change in climate. So these changes, those crops which are adjusting to that particular climate, agriculture sector, they are developing, scientists, they are developing such crops which can adjust with this changing climate or which can use very less water and give more productivity. So such kind of crops they are developing. So all these are coming under agriculture sector. So in this unit, 
and the three different chapters will be discuss discussing about all these topics so uh, let's move to our first topic of this chapter so in this chapter human health and diseases this is eighth chapter and in this chapter we are mainly discussing about common diseases which are seen in humans then immunity immunity body immunity then aids cancer drugs and alcohol abuse all these things we are going to discuss in this chapter this is for neat level this is important chapter you may get all these diseases that causative organisms then the cycle of that diseases that vectors all those things you can get so many mcqs from this chapter so compared to evolution chapter this chapter this is having more weightage because you will get lot of mcqs from this okay for neat this is very important because so many diseases then that organisms which are causing that disease all this you should note down this is very important so let's move so what is health health means see before some time that health health was considered as it's a state of body without any disturbance that was considered as health okay and the discovery discovery of blood circulation who discovered william harvey william harvey he discovered uh, blood circulation so after that the, through experimental methods and they demonstrated the normal body temperature in a person okay so after all those things they defined what is health after that there were so many wrong beliefs like which uh, uh, people those who are having black bile they are they will get fever or they will be feverish always like that some wrong beliefs were there okay some kind of misunderstandings because they were not having proper knowledge in the health sector so they were believing like that so discovery of this blood circulation by william harvey using experimental method and the demonstration they demonstrated the normal body temperature by some methods and that's how those kind of wrong beliefs they removed okay they proved that these are some wrong beliefs so in uh, some later after some time like later years they bio, in biology uh, they started learning about our immune system and our immune system that maintains our health like that and you know, all they started learning new new things so our immune system mainly our immune system that maintains our health see if, if you are weak our immunity is weak definitely we will get diseases more diseases compared to a normal person see now you know that covid such kind of things it's a new one so definitely people will be having less immunity it's a new causative organism right so for such kind of diseases up to one level only our body can withstand okay but the normal diseases in normal people they will get if a, if their immunity is working well they will get very less diseases like common cold and such things and all we can withstand for such diseases so if our immunity is proper or immune system that is maintaining our health so mind and mental state that can also affect our health okay so mainly immunity that maintains our health then health health mainly it is affected by genetic disorders if a person is having some kind of genetic disorders definitely that will affect health so genetic disorders means some deficiency in a newborn child uh, they are having any genetic deficiencies any deficiencies or some defects some inherited defects from parent it is inherited means such things will affect the health then some kind of infections that also will affect health and lifestyle of an uh, person a person's lifestyle then that is included that food habits then water or rest how they are taking if a person is not doing proper or not taking proper rest or if they are not having good eating habits or if they don't have 
physically they are not fit or they are not doing proper exercise or our body they are not taking care of our body or their habits habits which are not good so such things may lead to a poor health so all these genetic disorders infections then lifestyle all these are influencing our health got it then all are using that term health so what do you mean by health or how we can define health or what is health health is if you are healthy commonly what we will say if yeah that person is very healthy means that person don't have any disease or physically that person is fit like that we can say so it is defined as physical fitness or absence of any disease okay that health it is defined as physically mentally and in social way well being of a person that is called as health if a person is physically mentally they are fine means that state it is called as healthy condition okay then if you are healthy definitely we can work properly right if our health health is not good if we are not, we are feeling somewhat tired or feverish that will definitely affect our health so if people are healthy they will be more efficient they can do more work and they can increase the economic prosperity and mainly the health maternal health that reduces infant and maternal mortality got it so the term health health means absence of disease or that is a physical fitness and the health healthy condition that can be defined as complete physical mental and social well being physical mental and social well being complete physical mental and social well being that is called as healthy condition okay so when people are healthy they are more efficient at work and that increases the productivity and economic prosperity isn't it so health health that is also increasing longevity of people and that reduces infant and maternal mortality if people are healthy that reduces infant and maternal mortality okay then next to maintain a very good health we need proper exercise we need a good eating habit or eat good diet then personal hygiene these are very important to maintain good health what and all we need we need to do regularly we need to do exercise because that reduces the diseases or our extra fat will burn right so that's why all are saying every morning every day morning you should get up and you should do some kind of exercises that will reduce that will reduce your weight if you are if you are having overweight you can reduce you can do daily exercise that will help your help to improve your health so balanced diet regular exercise then personal hygiene all these are very important for good health condition then yoga we can see that yoga yoga practice that gives physical exercises as well as mental practice also like mentally how you can you can be calm how can how you can be cool like that that exercise mental and physical exercise that is the practice of yoga so yoga has been practiced since long time and that gives or that helps to improve the physical and mental health then awareness about disease we should be aware about different kind of diseases and how the effect of that diseases will be on or how that disease is affecting our body functions that we should be aware of about different vaccinations or immunization against some diseases so that's why all are asking to take that covid vaccination right some people are saying no that and all not necessary we no need to take that vaccination it's waste 
how we can say like that that is very important this vaccinations are very important that will boost your immunity see they that cannot give 100 percentage immunity but that can boost your immunity got it so we have to take the immunization proper immunization at a proper time that's why we are asking to give different vaccinations or immunization for kids or newborn babies then control of vectors control of vectors what do you mean by control of vectors see mosquitoes they are spreading so many diseases mosquitoes and other organisms they are spreading so many diseases to control such organism if you are controlling such organism and if you are maintaining good hygiene in water and food that that also helps to improve our health or that maintains our health properly that gives good health okay so what and all balanced diet personal hygiene and regular exercise that are very important to maintain good health then yoga yoga has been practiced in, since time immemorial to achieve physical and mental health to achieve physical and mental health for that only yoga we are practicing yoga right then awareness about diseases we should be aware about different diseases and their effect in the body functions then vaccination or immunization against infectious diseases then proper disposal of wastages waste okay so proper disposal of waste we are the main thing what we need to do is every one can do this wastage disposal that should be in a proper way you should not throw everything everywhere because it's your responsibility to maintain your surroundings in a clean and waste free manner right that shows your what is that that is your responsibility see your surroundings if every person all are ready to keep their surroundings properly means definitely everyone will follow that practice see we have a very bad habit whatever we are drinking tea we are throwing that cup there only and whatever whatever it may be if you are eating one chocolate they'll throw that in that spot only they'll throw so it's our responsibility each and every person is responsible for the maintenance of surroundings so we should maintain our surroundings very cleanly then control of vectors we need to control vectors see if you are maintaining our surroundings properly you can prevent the mosquitoes definitely at least one thing you can do you can't prevent all organisms growth but at least mosquitoes that you can do everyone can do if they are keeping their surroundings neatly at least one thing like mosquitoes such vectors they are spreading diseases so such vectors you can control then maintenance of hygiene in food and water see we are always people doctors are advising or from health sector you will get advice hygiene in food and water they are always asking to drink boiled water then food in a proper way in a hygiene we need to maintain that hygienic condition in food and water resources okay then all these all these are combined together for achieving a good health you need to follow all these then only you will get a good health then next is when the functioning of one or more organs or systems of the body is adversely affected characterized by appearance of various signs and symptoms we say that we are not healthy that means we have a disease so what is that when our body organs when our body organs are not functioning properly or a system the whole system of body it is adversely affected sometimes we will say oh we are feeling so tired it doesn't have a meaning that we have walked so much not like that if we have some kind of if our body is having any kind of problem it is 
not in a good healthy condition that means our organs won't work properly our body won't work properly if our digestive system is not working properly that also will affect our health so such things they our body will show some kind of signs or symptoms so we can say that that time all these symptoms are giving notification or our body is giving such alarms or signs to show that we are not in a healthy condition that means we have a disease or our body is not healthy so disease we can group these diseases into two categories one is infectious infectious diseases and non infectious diseases so there are two types of diseases infectious diseases and non infectious diseases then disease that can easily be transmitted from one person to another one that are called as infectious diseases infectious diseases means that disease can be easily transmitted from one person to another person the that type of diseases are called as infectious diseases that can be easily transmitted from person to person then almost every like common cold and all such things and all common cold that and all coming under fever such things and all coming under infectious diseases because it is very easy to spread from one person to another person so everyone will get one or the other time everyone will get that kind of infectious diseases and some other some kind of diseases like aids aids that is also infectious diseases that can also be transmitted from one person to another one isn't it if you have a contact with a aids person aids infected person definitely that will go to another the contacted person also but that that is spreading through sexual contacts and all okay so diseases like aids that are fatal what do you mean by fatal that may cause death of that person okay that may be fat, fatal so among non infectious diseases cancer is the major cause of death so non infectious infectious diseases means that can be transmitted from that or that is easily transmitted from one person to another one what about non infectious diseases what is that that cannot be transmitted with the diseases which are not transmitted from one person to another that infection cannot be transmitted from one person to another one those are called as non infectious diseases like cancer see still in our society we have some wrong belief that we should not sit with a cancer patient the cancer and all that will not spread from one person to another person that is not infectious okay at least your generation you should be bother about such things you should have proper knowledge about such diseases so infectious diseases that will spread from one person or it is getting transmitted from one person to another person very easily but non infectious diseases that infection will not get transmitted to another person so non infectious diseases example is cancer cancer is the major cause of death there are different types of cancer then alcohol and drug abuse that also affects our health adversely there is an adverse effect for drug if you are using a medicines more than if a doctor is prescribing one medicine for one month and if you are getting cured then afterwards also some people will think ah this is good for health we will continue this don't do that so drugs and alcohol that we should not use more that abuse of drug and alcohol then drugs all those drugs we should not use or we should not misuse all these things so such things that may lead to a bad Health or that and all will affect our health in an adverse way. Got it? Then so many organisms like virus, bacteria, fungi, then helminths, protozoans, all these, 
all these are causing diseases in human beings okay which are all organism bacteria fungi protozoa and helminths virus all these are causing different types of diseases in human being so disease causing organism these organisms which are causing disease that is called as pathogens pathogens are the disease causing organisms this is causing organisms are called as pathogens for example bacteria fungi virus protozoa and helminths all these are commonly called as pathogens because they are the causative organisms for or they are causing diseases disease causing organisms they are called as pathogen commonly called as pathogens okay so the study about these pathogens it is called as pathology pathology is the study of disease causing organism so most parasites they are pathogens because they are causing harmful effect to the host because pathogens pathogens are living on the host so they are causing adverse effect on that host or they are causing or they are living a parasitic life on that host it may live in or on that host and that is having a parasitic life so definitely parasite parasite will cause bad effect on that host or it will cause harmful effect on that host so most of the parasites they are pathogens they are pathogens and they cause harmful effect to that host activity of that organism normal activity of that organism will be interrupted and that will result in the changes or that will result in the change in the function of that organism or that will move from the normal way and that causes the damage okay damage or that causes the disease condition then the pathogens pathogens are inside the organism so the pathogens must be able to live inside the host organism and that should get adjusted with the host body conditions right if a pathogen it is not able to live within that host or if an organism or a pathogen is entering inside human being and it is not able to adapt or it is not able to adjust with the human body temperature that will die isn't it see how we are getting fever if any any organism any pathogen is entering inside our body is resisting resisting or our body is trying to resist that or uh, to prevent our body from that organisms or that pathogens attack that's why our body is increasing the temperature right in that way also their body is trying to resist so that's how we are getting fever then pathogens they have to adapt with the host body so the pathogen that enter the gut that must know at the stage right inside our stomach inside our gut one organism is entering or one pathogen is entering means that organism should be able to survive in that temperature condition or in our body there is a very in our stomach the ph is very low in that low ph this organism should be able to survive and in our so many enzymes so many enzymes are involved in our digestion so this pathogen or this organism should be able to survive in that condition got it so wide range of organism belonging to bacteria virus fungi protozoa and helminths all this could cause disease in man then disease causing organisms are called as pathogens so what are pathogens 
disease causing organisms they are called as pathogens and most parasites are therefore pathogens as they cause harm to the host by living in or on the host so the pathogens can enter our body by various means and after entering what they will do they'll multiply and they'll interfere with the normal vital activities and these inter these organisms will interfere with the normal vital activities so what will happen that results in the morphological and functional damage okay then these pathogens they should have the ability to adapt to the life within the host environment so inside the host that environment will be different so the pathogen should be able to withstand or that that pathogen should have the capacity to adjust with the host body environment then for example what we are saying if a pathogen is entering in the gut in the gut of human a pathogen is entering means that that must know that pathogen must know how to survive inside the stomach because inside the stomach the ph is very low and there are so many enzymes which are involved in our digestion process so in the digestion process so many enzymes are involved so this pathogen should be able to survive in that enzymatic digestion okay otherwise that also will die got it then from different groups we are selecting some pathogens and we are going to discuss about some kind of diseases so about few diseases we are going to explain now so you have to note down that disease that causative organism and what kind of the condition if you are getting that disease how the symptoms will be first you need to note down the disease then causative organism then symptoms and if you have any medicines for that that also will mention and there are different types which type of organism is causing whether it is a bacteria whether it is a virus that you should note down okay so we are going to discuss some diseases here and how we can prevent this disease how we can control this disease all these things what whichever disease i am explaining whatever point i am explaining please note down because there is uh, these are not very important for your board exam if you may get a question about typhoid or malaria malarial parasite that life cycle so i'm going to explain all these things this will be useful for your board exam and your neat exam then first this is this is typhoid fever typhoid fever this is a bacterial disease got it this is a bacterial disease first you note down this is a bacterial disease and which bacteria is causing this disease salmonella typhi the organism the bacteria which is causing this typhoid fever that is salmonella typhi that is a bacterium that causes typhoid fever in human being okay salmonella typhi the pathogenic bacterium that causes typhoid fever in human beings and this generally how this pathogen is entering this pathogen is entering to the small intestine through food and water food and contaminated food and water and after that they move to other organs through blood got it so typhoid fever it is a bacterial disease it is caused by salmonella typhi this is a the salmonella typhi is the pathogenic bacterium and that causes this is typhoid fever typhoid fever in human being then generally this salmonella typhi is entering inside small intestine how it is entering through contaminated food and water then they will move to the blood stream and they will reach to other organs also got it then high fever high fever that means around 39 to 40 degree 39 to 40 degree high fever then weakness 
stomach pain, constipation, headache, and loss of appetite. These are the symptoms of this disease. If I'm explaining about one disease, you should note down the causative organism, whether it is a bacteria or virus or fungus, whatever it may be, you should note down which type of organism is that and which is that organism and what are all the symptoms and control measures, then prevention, how we can prevent this, all these things you should note down. Okay, so first I'm saying typhoid fever, in that this is a bacterial disease, salmonella typhi, that is a pathogenic bacterium and that causes typhoid fever. So first this salmonella typhi that is entering to the small intestine through contaminated food and water, then it is reaching the bloodstream and that's how it is migrating to other, through bloodstream it is reaching to other organs. Got it? Then symptoms. What are all the symptoms? High fever around 39 to 40 degree. That is high fever, then weakness, stomach pain, constipation, headache and loss of appetite. These are the common symptoms of typhoid. Then intestinal perforations and death. In severe cases, that is also reported. Intestinal perforations, then death also reported. In some typhoid, in some cases of typhoid fever. Intestinal perforations, then death. All these, these two cases also reported in infected people. Then, how we can confirm this typhoid fever? This we can confirm by vital test. Note that by vital test we can confirm typhoid fever. Mary Mellon, her nickname is Typhoid Mary. So how this test came, that's what I'm saying. She was a cook and she was a typhoid carrier and she continued to spread typhoid for several years. How? Because she was a cook and through the food preparation, this contaminated food, through that she spread the disease for several years because that time and all they were not knowing about the typhoid fever or that typhoid fever condition. So, viral test. By viral test, we can detect the typhoid fever. So, typhoid, it is a bacterial disease. It is caused by Salmonella typhi. That is a pathogen, bacterial pathogen. And that first, this organism is entering to the small intestine. And how it is entering? Through contaminated food and water. Then it is migrating to other organs through bloodstream. Then what are all the symptoms? High fever, stomach pain, weakness, constipation, headache and loss of appetite. So these are the main symptoms or common symptoms of typhoid. Then typhoid we can confirm by voidal test. Then Mary Mellon, her nickname is Typhoid Mary. She was the carrier for years. To spread this typhoid for several years through this contaminated food she prepared. Got it? Next disease is pneumonia. See, these are all the commonly heard diseases, typhoid, pneumonia and all. Pneumonia is also a bacterial diseases, typhoid, pneumonia, these are all bacterial diseases. Pneumonia is also a bacterial disease and it is caused by which bacteria? Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenza. See, Streptococcus pneumonia and Haemophilus influenza. These two are responsible for pneumonia in human being. So, pneumonia is also a bacterial disease. This is caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenza. These two are responsible for the Pneumonia disease in human. Okay. So, how it is getting infected? This infects the alveoli. Alveoli means that air fills sacs of lungs. Alveoli of lungs. That air fills sacs of lungs. See now, this corona. Corona time, we can hear that. Finally, that affected lungs and that pneumonia started. So, such things we are hearing now. 
So this is the condition that that is that infection that leads to the alveoli alveoli of lens that air filled sacs of lens. So that may finally lead to death also. So bacteria like Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenzae. These are responsible for the pneumonia in human being and the infection that first infects the alveoli. Alveoli of lens. Alveoli means that air filled sacs of lens. So when it is getting infected, the alveoli that will get filled with fluid. Okay. The instead of the air, it is getting filled with fluid, and this leads to respiratory problems. Got it? And the symptom, pneumonia symptoms that that are fever. Definitely pneumonia symptom that includes fever, then chills, then Cough, headache, fever, cough, headache, chills. So these are the symptoms of pneumonia. So in some other cases, they may get gray or blue shaded color in nail, fingernails, fingernails and lips. They will get a dry lips which is having gray or bluish color and Fingernails also will turn grey or bluish. Okay, in some cases. That means in if the severe condition, it is in severe condition means lips and fingernails also will turn grey and bluish color. Then healthy person. How a healthy person is getting this infection? By inhaling the droplets or aerosols released by an infected person. Or even by sharing the glasses or utensils with an infected person. Right? Same case we are saying in the case of COVID. We are saying that we should not, if one person, infected person is using the utensils, we should not share the same utensils. We should not use the same utensils. Right? Because through the droplets or aerosols, through the droplets or aerosols, which is released, after inhaling that is released, that aerosol or those droplets, they are causing the infection to another person. Or they are, uh, by inhaling that, other person is getting infection. Okay, a healthy person is getting infection by inhaling the droplets or aerosols released from the infected person. Got it? So while coughing or sneezing, these droplets may come out, these aerosols may come out. So, the same thing a healthy person is inhaling. That will spread in the air. So, that air one person is inhaling means the healthy person will get the infection. So, pneumonia. Pneumonia is also a bacterial infection that is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae or hemophilus influenzae. These are the main organisms or bacterial pathogens which are responsible for the pneumonia in human being. And this infects the Lens alveoli. Okay. So, if they are getting infected, instead of air, that alveoli will get filled with fluid. And that creates respiratory problems. Then, fever, cough, headache, all these are the symptoms. Fever, cough, headache and all. It is a symptom of pneumonia. This is, the common symptoms are fever, Curve, headache. So, in severe cases, if the condition is severe, in that condition, lips and fingernails may turn bluish color or gray color. Okay. Then, how a healthy person is getting infected? If an infected person is coughing or sneezing, the aerosol or the droplets may get released. So, that, that will spread in the air and the same air is inhaled by a healthy person with, which is having the droplets or aerosols that healthy person also will get infected. And we should not share the utensils like glass, plate and all with that in, with an infected person. Then, next is dysentery. Dysentery. Dysentery is Caused by Shigella dysentery. No doubt, Shigella dysentery. This is the causative organism and this is intestinal inflammation. 
and this is uh, accompanied by bloody diarrhea diarrhea which is having blood content in that okay so dysentery that is caused by shigella shigella dysentery shigella dysentery and dysentery is how it is coming or how it is getting spread through contaminated water and food and that is getting transmitted through the fecal and oral route got it the main symptom is bloody diarrhea diarrhea in that blood content will be there so in this case also they may get fever then uh abdominal pain all these things will come all these symptoms that patient may show the abdominal pain then and all symptoms will be shown by the patient or the infected person then medical care proper medical care is required for this because the presence of blood and mucus in this stool in the stool blood and mucus presence will be there then this diarrhea diarrhea may lead to dehydration of that body right diarrhea may lead to the dehydration of body so the treatment how we can treat this by the intake of fluid more fluid intake and rehydration solution if body is getting dehydrated we need to give more solutions or rehydrating solution then iv fluids iv fluid means intravenous fluid why we are giving intravenous fluid for treating the dehydration for dehydrating a dehydrated condition we are giving intravenous fluid to rehydrate the body then we are giving antibiotics antibiotics it is against the causative organism got it so dysentery dysentery means that is the inflammation of intestine and that that causes diarrhea and in stool presence of blood bloody stool that is the main symptom then dysentery is caused by shigella dysentery that is the causative organism shigella dysentery then that is transmitted through oral route oral or fecal route oral or fecal route it is getting transmitted and main symptom is bloody diarrhea bloody diarrhea is the main very important symptom and that infected person that may uh, that person may also show uh cramps fever then malaise then abdominal pain all these are shown by the infected person then immediate and proper medical care is required because diarrhea means in that condition body will get dehydrated then that dehydrated condition if that continues that may lead to so many problems will become totally tired and treatment treatment how we can treat we can give antibiotics then rehydrate in some fluid fluid intake we can increase the fluid intake and the rehydrating solutions iv fluids intravenous fluids which is to prevent or which is to manage or for treating the dehydrated condition that gives the rehydration to the body not it then next is plague next condition is or next disease is plague plague means this disease affects other mammals and humans so it is caused by bacterium yersinia pestis yersinia pestis no doubt plague it is caused by yersinia pestis so how human is getting plague how humans are usually getting plague that is after being bitten by a rodent flea rodent fleas that uh, those fleas are carrying this plague bacterium plague bacterium yersinia pestis this fleas are carrying this rodent fleas are carrying plague bacterium so that 
rodent that is biting humans or that mammal so that's how they are getting infected with plague okay or the carrying plague bacterium or by handling animals the animals which are infected with plague so through that also a human is getting plague so normally plague it is transmitted by fleas so this is very serious condition but it is rare condition that infection is very rare okay so the symptoms what are now the symptoms swollen lymph nodes lymph lymph nodes will become swollen and that will become large as chicken egg then they may be tender and warm and the other symptoms like fever chills headache fatigue and muscle aches all these are the symptoms of plague then bubonic plague that requires urgent hospital treatment with strong antibiotics bubonic plague that is that needs urgent hospitalization and there there should be the treatment with antibiotics got it so plague it is or that this disease that affects human and other mammals then it is caused by yersinia pestis bacterial infection this is a bacterial disease yersinia pestis that is a causative organism then humans usually get plague after being bitten by rodent rodent flea that is carrying the plague bacteria or by handling animal which is infected with plague like that also humans may get plague disease then it is a rare disease but a serious bacterial infection that is transmitted through fleas then what are all the symptoms of this disease symptoms of plague the symptoms include large and swollen lymph nodes and the lymph nodes can be as large as chicken eggs okay then chill fever headache fatigue muscle aches all these are the symptoms so bubonic plague that requires hospitalization immediate hospitalization and antibiotic treatment otherwise we can't survive got it so we have learned about plague dysentery pneumonia and typhoid four diseases bacterial diseases today so do you have any doubt in this do you have any doubt is it clear up to this please go through these portions we have some more diseases to learn and we need to learn about immunity and other concepts like uh, aids cancer all those things we need to learn in this chapter and malaria the cycle of that parasite everything we need to learn so now you have to learn about typhoid then next one is pneumonia dysentery and plague all these four bacterial infections or bacterial diseases go through all these things then in the next class we'll be learning about other diseases so hope it's clear up to this if you have any doubt you can ask me in the next class please go through this portions thank you no doubt ma'am okay thank you